What's up everybody, ADS Play 101 here and welcome to a very special stream, one that I don't really get a chance to do too many of. Uh, I always wanted to do a tier maker and I never knew exactly what to do a tier maker on. You know, some people do tier makers based on breakfast cereals uh, or just breakfast in general, shoes, clothes, clothing brands. But me, I watch anime and I play video games. So I figured what video game could I do a tier list a, a tier maker on and I thought about it the main game that I play especially on stream is Pokemon Unite and by the way if not following me on TikTok and watching those live streams you're bugging you're bugging follow me on my TikTok just please do yourself that favor like we really be having fun over here like, like you're missing out you're missing out don't be that guy please don't be that guy don't be over there missing out on fun because you want to be dumb. Back to the video. So anyway, we are making a tier list for all the Pokemon and <laughs> you bugging me. <laughs> you must not know that I'm bugging. <laughs> anyway, so we have a tier list right here that I asked people is the tiers themselves good? And everybody said that, you know, so far that the tiers are solid enough. So just to show you, the Pokemon that they have in the tier list, right, are up to Blaziken. Now, again, some of you guys who are not familiar with my TikTok live streams, you know I have access to the Pokemon Unite test server, and they get early ver earlier versions of Pokemon that have yet to be released in the main game. Um, I have been testing out Mewtwo, XY, and Blaziken who are in the test server for, since like July 3rd. So. You know, even with the recent balance changes that they made in the Tesla reform. So I'm familiar with those characters, but I feel like because, especially with the case of Mewtwo Y and, um, and Blaziken, since we we don't have any actual, uh, we don't have any actual um, experience in seeing them in an actual match in ranked or anything like that in the main game, I kind of put a tier in there that kind of, puts them in you know in the right placement so these are all the tiers right here and i'm gonna explain what each of them mean so the first tier we have is called get now everybody knows what get is you know but in the context of this tier list get basically just means unstoppable that means you don't want to go against them it's super difficult to deal with and more than likely they're banned in any sanctioned world championship tournament or anything like that right so I don't think too many Pokemon are going to go there. But right underneath that, we have Overpowered, right? And for a little bit, we was debating on whether or not Overpowered and Gat should be uh, merged into the same tier. But, you know, after a little bit of discussion, there's some Pokemon that are just plain unstoppable. And there's some that's just, they're just overpowered at the moment, you know? And just because they're overpowered doesn't necessarily mean that you can't beat them. It just means that they're that difficult to go against. Next up, we have crazy early game. That means early on, they're difficult to deal with. You know, some Pokemon, they only have one form. And um, they're super powerful in the early game. But they cap out early. But the, in the early game, they're just difficult to deal with. So that's what that tier is for. Next up, we got solid but needs experience. This is a tier for Pokemon who, as the name implies, they're good Pokemon to use, but they require experience to really use them effectively. And this has to do with their held items, uh, their boost emblems, of course, uh, but more primarily their held items and their movesets to really get the full um, potential out of them. Next up, we have solid mid to late game. Right, These are Pokemon who early games who may be weak as hell but they reach their peak at like level 5 and sometimes level 9 um, and, and in some rare cases even level 8 um, so it takes time to really build them up you have to have a little bit of experience to build them up to get them to that point where it's like okay now I can start initiating team fights, uh, ganks or anything of that nature uh, the tier after that we have stop playing in lane we have stop playing in lane now this tier is for Pokemon who have no business being outside of the jungle. 
Now, I know some people, they want to play their favorite Pokemon, and they'll, you know, they'll go to, like, top lane or bottom lane with them. But with them not understanding the structure of the way the MOBA is supposed to be played, they end up putting their Pokemon in a lane that they have no business in, and it kind of messes up the whole team, uh, the team sync. So it kind of throws things off a little bit. Especially when there's a Pokemon that works better in the lane, and that Pokemon ends up having to go jungle because people want to be stubborn and go to a place where the Pokemon doesn't work as good. So that's what that's for. Next up, we have why are you playing this? These are Pokemon that have been nerfed to hell, or they don't do enough to be used seriously in ranked, right? Because they're, they're either not strong enough, they need some buffs, or they're just not playing, they're, they're just not good for the role that they are in when there's better options in that role. So that's what that is. And to be determined, it's a Pokemon that I've played in the test server who may be available in the test server, but because we haven't seen them in action in the main game, we don't really know how good or bad they will actually be until we see them in that environment. So these are the tiers right here. Um, there's eight of them. Let's see, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight tiers. So I want to go ahead and get started. So let me, uh, let me get back to the chat. So everybody ready? All right, so everybody ready? And like I see, y'all already making y'all decisions. Everybody ready, right? Everybody ready? Okay, good. Okay, let's go. So first things first, we have to be determined. We're going to start from the bottom to the top, and we can. And we're going to change the, uh, you know, the Pokemon for the tiers, and like, you know, as we go on, because early on we might put a Pokemon in a place where. Later on, we might figure, oh, it's better if this Pokemon goes here or there. So like, we're going to make changes as we go along. But the first tier we're going to focus on is to be determined. And I think the only two that really fit in that category is uh, Mewtwo Y and Blaziken. Because they, as of right now, they are not in the main game. It is August 13th. We're getting Mewtwo Y in, on the 17th, which is this Thursday. So in like, what, four days? And we're getting Blaziken on September 14th. Now, again, people who've watched my TikTok live streams, you know that I have access to the test server and that I have showcased what these characters can do. I gave my opinions on the characters. Um, I've, I've done videos on them, on uh, how best they could be played. I gave my opinion on that. And when I did it for Me2X, literally, like, the, the, the way that I explained, even for Intellion before he came into the main game, I literally gave advice on how to use the characters and how they're, how they're supposed to be used, and literally people are following that, you know. Even if they didn't watch my videos, they're playing the character in the, way, in the exact way that I said it. So it's kind of cool to see, you know, me having access to the characters early, forming an opinion, and seeing other people playing the character the way I talked about. So I'm not saying I'm God or nothing like that, but... You know, to get that early look on the character, it's kind of like you can build a counter strategy against him if there is one, and you can try to make some type of plan to deal with them before they get into the main game. So that's kind of the advantage that the test server has. But because we don't, we haven't actually seen them in the ranked game, in the main game yet. I think they're the only two at the moment that can be placed in the to be determined uh, category. So that's why they're there. They're not good, they're not bad. I mean, in the test server, they're good or bad or whatever, but, you know, they make changes to them before they put them in the main game. So again, we don't know how they might work in the main game. So they're to be determined. So next up, right above that, we have, why are you playing this? We have, why are you playing this? So based on your opinion, who belongs in the why are you playing this tier? I'm literally giving y'all the power right now. Who said Tyranitar? I don't think Tyranitar belongs in the why are you playing this. Like Tyranitar is solid. Like he's a higher tier than that. Okay. All right. So y'all see Pikachu, right? 
All right, so we're going to throw Pikachu in there. Who else belongs in the Why Are You Playing This uh, list? You say Absol? I don't know. That's kind of tough. Like, I don't know if Absol belongs there. Sableye? Sableye, I can agree with. Where's Sableye? And um, is anybody else, does anybody else belong there? Nah, Sableye definitely higher in my opinion. So, Serena? Um, I can't really say Serena belongs in Why Are You Playing It. You know what? I will put her in there. I will put her in there for the simple fact, for the same reason that I've, I've, I have for Pikachu. Right? Even though she's not Pikachu level. Let me see, where the hell is she? Right here. I'm going to put her in there. We might change this as we're going along, but right now, I'm, I'm going to just leave her there. All right. Like, she's nerd to the ground. No, absolutely we're crazy with Chris. All right. Serena and Wiggly. I don't think Wiggly Tough belongs in there either. Like, Wiggly Tough is kind of solid. What's up with Pikachu? Okay. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I, now, now, like, Mr. Mom just takes some experience. Like, Mr. Mom, um... Oh, hell no. Like, I wouldn't put Cramorant in Why Are You Playing This. I wouldn't put Cramorant in there. Like, Cramorant can do a lot of damage. And he causes a lot of problems in, in lane. So, like, he definitely doesn't belong in there. But I do agree with these three being in there. I do agree with these three being in there. One... If you're familiar with my TikToks, you know I went on countless rants about Pikachu. Pikachu is an attacker that is not good in his in his role. Pikachu has been regulated, I think since like season three or four. Pikachu has pretty much been regulated to being a support character more than anything. He doesn't fit being an attacker, and I and I've, I've even tested damage. Y'all, some of y'all have been in here when I did the uh, did the damage test with Pikachu. And other attackers do way more damage than what Pikachu can offer. And it's funny, though, because I, I, I actually went to a website. I'm not going to say which one. They put Cramorant below Pikachu all because of stuns. Mind you, Cramorant has knockups. It has uh, hindrances. You know, with Surf, it knocks him up when, it, when the wave goes forward. It knocks him up when the wave comes back. So... He has that, that interruptive move set. Um, so Pikachu's stuns really ain't all that. Um, Pikachu doesn't do enough damage for the role that it's given. And even when, I think like during season 9 or season 10, they changed up the Unite moves to where, depending on the, the role that you have, the, your Unite move gives you certain bonuses. Like, for example, Pikachu is an attacker. When attackers use their Unite move, they get an attack speed boost. Pikachu doesn't really get one. He doesn't really get an attack speed boost when he uses his Unite move. So, it's kind of like you got an attacker who isn't even getting the bonus benefit of using the Unite move that the rest of them get. So, it's like, he, he, he doesn't do enough damage. His better move set cooldowns are too high. And because of the damage that he does, again, he only is beneficial when the enemy team is almost dead. You know, I even made the comparison, like, if you and a few other people get into a fight, right? If you and a few other people are in a group, and another group comes to fight y'all, Pikachu is that one person in the group that leaves or doesn't come in until everybody else on the team that y'all fighting or in the group that y'all fighting are pretty much almost beaten already. That's the only time Pikachu is a threat. When people have this much health left. So because of that, I can't really see Pikachu being in any threat. Cramorant has given me more problems than Pikachu. But yet some websites will put Cramorant at a rank below Pikachu. So it's like, I don't really see the point. Right, but it's like... It, it's low, that's what I said. It's, it's, it's pretty much been regulated to a support role. It's not an attacker anymore. Um, Sableye got nerfed when I think it, it, it had no business being nerfed. On top of the fact Sableye wasn't all that, 
Sableye got nerfed, so it's weaker. It's weaker now. Sableye is like its main issue that I had with Sableye, the main issue that I personally had with Sableye is that you know as passive as him running around and then eventually he disappears and he gains movement speed. You know, he's like a sneaky scorer. But if you're around the enemy team, they get an icon that pops up above their head that let that lets them know that Sableye is near them. My only issue is that that icon alert, when Sableye is near them, he doesn't get revealed until like later on. So it's been times when the Sableye icon would uh would pop up, but Sableye wouldn't be revealed until after he already scored a point. So you wouldn't know that he's there. You know, in similar games, when um in, in other MOBAs like League of Legends, there are characters that pretty much do what Sableye does, but when they're around somebody, they get revealed after like a split second. And I think if they would have fixed that on Sableye, that was the only thing they needed to fix. But they nerfed his damage and I think they increased some of his cooldowns as well. In uh, like a couple patches ago. So and even in a meta where we need supporters to be more disturbing and be more healing and do you no know, healing or provide extra support as far as like speed boost and all that Sableye is like the weakest supporter right now it's, it's virtually no reason to play this character it's weak as hell the one gimmick that it had you know he, like he doesn't provide anything helpful for the current metagame so it's literally a case of why the hell are you playing him like so th that's Sableye next up is Serena now here's my thing with Serena I don't think Serena is a bad Pokemon I think she's just bad for the current metagame like I think Serena is just bad for the current metagame right Serena at one point was one of the better all-rounders in this game but later on it's almost like she kind of got left in the dust there's other all-rounders that do better jobs of being an all-rounder than she does and with the game having so much crowd control that it does you pretty much need to be more or less a specialist to really use her like that so we might move her to another tier but as of right now it's like when you look at other all-rounders like urshifu or dragonite or Hell, I would even say Mewtwo X. You have better options than what she can allow. I, I know her Queen's Majesty ability gives her extra moves, as well as like shields and things like that, and helps her heal. But it's not enough for the current meta game. So it, it really kind of asks the question: Is really why are you using her right now? You know what I'm saying? So. But I, like I said, I might move her up the tier list. But uh, right now, I would say she's in the proper placement. Yeah, like she's she's very squishy. Right, like it's it's really other options. So, so I'm gonna leave her there right now. Next up, we have stop playing in lane. Stop playing these characters in lane. Now I'm gonna start this one off personally. I'm gonna start this one off personally. Alright, where the hell he at? Where the hell he at? Dodrio. I'm gonna start it off with Dodrio. Dodrio's entire gimmick is running so he can stay powered up. Why would you put him in any other lane besides jungle? In jungle he can run around, stay powered up, he can move around fast. There's other, there's better options for lane than Dodrio. You have no reason putting this Pokemon in top lane or bottom lane. Just keep him in jungle. There's no, there's virtually no reason for people to put him in top lane or bottom lane. I get it. Even if you feel like you're good with him in those lanes, it makes no sense. They literally made him for the jungle. He's literally just running around. He should be a speedster. He probably is a speedster. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I didn't look at the, him in a damn, what you call him. But I don't use them, so I don't like I don't know off the top of my head. Like, is Dojo a speedster? 
He's a speedster, right? He's a speedster? Okay. So he belongs in the jungle. His moveset means that he needs to be in the jungle. His passive means that he needs to be in the jungle. There's no reason to be playing him in lane over other Pokemon. So, why are you playing him in lane? So, who else do y'all feel like belongs? Yeah. You can tell by the background colors. Yeah, y'all right. So, who else y'all feel like belong in this, uh, in this category? Talonflame? No, I think you could put Urshifu in, uh, in bottom lane. In bottom lane and top lane. Like, you can actually run him in lane. Zoroar? Okay, no problem. Zoroar, I can agree with that. Zoroar definitely has no business being in damn lane. At all. Especially over other Pokemon. Gengar. That's another good one. I cannot disagree with that. Oh, let me open this up. Alright. Decidueye. Decidueye is actually meant for lane. What I mean by lane is top lane or bottom lane. Like when I say lane, I mean top lane or bottom lane. Mid is jungle. Mid is the jungle. Yeah, like the situation I can definitely lane. And Dragapult can lane too. Zorak. Um I low-key want to put Zorak in another tier. Because I feel like, yeah, he, he, he needs to stop being played in the lane. But out of all of the speedsters, he's one of the few. He, he's, he's only like one or two that I can really see being used in lane, for real. He, he, there's only two of them that I can actually see being used in lane. If, 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 if you're going to use any of them. Yeah, Moxie, I did watch Worlds. But, um... Over other options, I wouldn't put him outside of uh, jungle. Right. There's other options to where you, he doesn't need to be in top lane or bottom lane. But I, do, but I can see myself putting him in another category. To be determined mean that we haven't seen them in an actual ranked match in the main game yet. But they are available in the test server. I, I kind of went over that. But, um... Zora, Absol, Absol, that's another one. Absol, that's another one. Definitely agree. Absol has no business being in lane over other Pokemon. Over other Pokemon. Cramorant should be. Why are you playing this? <laughs> now, nah, Cramorant is actually decent in lane. He's actually decent. He does great damage. He, he got some good hindrances. Duraludon, why are you playing this? Um... I'm not going to put him in there just yet, um, 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 Eric. I'm not going to put him in there just yet, because I feel like he belongs in another category. Maybe Cinderace, but he, he won't do well until 7. Uh, to be honest with you, Cinderace is still solid no matter where he goes. Cinderace is, is solid no, no matter where he goes. Do I think he can thrive in jungle? Absolutely. But... Yeah, yeah, Duraludon just takes a little bit of finesse. Like, he needs some dexterity. Like, you got to know what you're doing with Duraludon. You know, even though he doesn't do as much damage to wild Pokemon anymore, and he can't really solo Rayquaza like he once did, you know, in the right hands, again, it takes people that knows what they're doing with certain Pokemon to really, uh, just, no, no, they, funny enough, they got two speedsters that, can actually play lane really well. So, like, I'm just going off of the current metagame. I low-key kind of want to throw Greninja in there, to be honest with you. I low-key kind of want to throw Greninja in there. But some of y'all might disagree with me on that. Yeah, Greninja can lane. He can. But I feel like Greninja in this current meta works better as a jungler than anything. But that's just my opinion. Talonflame? Yeah, Talonflame belongs in there. 
what I mean? Like, I'm not just going to drop all the speedsters in there just because. It's, it's two speedsters that can actually lane. Now, like, Pikachu doesn't do enough damage for anything. I'm going to put it like this. Nobody in the World Championship picked him. There's better options. But I think Talonflame can still do a good amount of burst damage. Talonflame can still do a good amount of burst damage. It just takes, like, you got to know what you're doing with him. Now you gotta know when to attack. It's, just, it's one of those when to attack Pokemon. You have to know when to go in and, and attack with him. Like you can't just dive in there like crazy because he doesn't have the health to like really stay. Leafeon, I kind of, I'm kind of gonna put Leafeon in another uh, zone. I think Leafeon can thrive in the lane, but it's not stop playing him in in in, in lane. Like I don't think it's a stop playing him in lane situation. But I'm going to just put him in there for the time being Because it's like I feel like he just thrives in lane More so than anything else Yeah like Leafeon I think Leafeon thrives best As an assassin in lane But I don't really see Leafeon Being an issue in top or bottom Yeah like Leafeon is kind of solid anywhere Hoopla no, nah, you can play Hooper in lane. Hooper needs to be in lane, to be honest with you. I'm looking around. I don't really see any... Yeah, but that's, you know what? This is the reason why I put Zorak and uh, Leafeon at the, at, at the end of the line. Because... Unlike the first five, Leafeon and Zorak are the only two who I can see actually going in in lane. Yeah, like, like I literally think Leafeon and Zorak are the only two speedsters that can actually go in lane and do something. Yeah, speedsters are made for jungle. I feel like there are other... You know what I'm saying? But, you know, based on the experience going in solo, in solo rank, you know, there are some times when you can actually substitute Leafeon and Zorak to go in either top lane or bottom lane. So, I know, but like we're, just, we're not just going off a of role itself, we're kind of going off of the metagame. Like, we, we, we're kind of going off of the current metagame. Because you got some Pokemon in certain roles that work better as something else at the moment. In lane? I wouldn't put Tyranitar and stop going in lane. Like, Tyranitar can be solid. I don't know about top lane, but bottom lane, he definitely... He works. He's just one of those more difficult Pokemon that, uh... He peaks at, at later levels. He's like late game. But I think we got everything. I, th I think we got all the Pokemon that belongs there. I'm trying to think of them. Like, who else c could be put there? For real. What about Garchomp? In the current metagame, um, do you think Garchomp works better as, as, as like a jungler? Not Garchomp? No, I'm saying, like, do you think he works better as a jungler than a laner? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it takes long, but again, that's that, that takes experience. You got to know what to do leading up to that point, Scooter. Now, like Dragapult can stay in lane. Um, 
Low key, I think Scizor can be like in a lane. Like, I think Scizor can be played in lane, but. I don't know, like, would you put Scizor in, in, in like another. Like, would you pick Scizor over anybody else? You ain't need that form, but once you get to level 5, it's like. Yeah, like Scyther is low-key. You know what? I, I wish they kind of separated Scyther and Scizor in this, uh, in this what you call them. Like, they kind of got them in the same, as the same character. So, you got like Scyther isn't separate in the, in the list. They're like, I don't know why they didn't put Scyther separate. So, they kind of messed up right there. So I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Let me make a text. And I'm gonna just kind of place it in that in that box. Like we're just gonna say Scyther. And we're just gonna place it in the box. We're just gonna shrink it. We're gonna place it in the box right there. Cause they didn't make them separate, so it's like I gotta like put them right there. I low key think Scyther, the Scyther's form works better in jungle. Um, Cause I feel like he's more sneaky. Scizor, however, works better in lane. But he can work in jungle too. Trinitar is just underwhelming in this meta. He's underwhelming, but he's still viable. I mean, like, would I pick him, would I choose him over other picks? Only if the situation calls for it. Cause sometimes you need more defense, and you got some all-rounders that are more defensive than uh than offensive. Well, I don't know. So, like, would y'all? Okay. So, like, let me ask everybody: Do you think Scizor belongs in the stop playing in lane category? Like, do y'all think Scizor belongs in the stop playing in lane? Okay. All right. I already got Scyther there. I already got Scyther there because I think Scyther works better in the jungle than Scizor does. Yo, hang on, Leaf Girl. I forgot her name. Serena. You talking about Serena? Yeah. The only reason why she's in the wide on the planet, like I said, I might move her to another lane, a mo another tier, but just. We're at the moment, she's going to remain in why are you playing this? Because I feel like there's better all-rounders. Uh -oh. oh, is the microphone messing up? Is the microphone messed up? She got left a while ago. And then on top of that, her moveset doesn't help the meta. Oh, it's a little distorted, my bad. Or how about now? Is the microphone good now? Is the microphone good now, or do I gotta fix it? Is it good now? Mic test, mic test, mic test. I'm starting to find my line. Oh. Is it good? Was the microphone good? Nah? Oh, you talking card. Mike good? Okay, good. I gotta forgive me this damn thing.
Okay, here we go. All right. So keep Scyther and stop playing in lane and Scizor pretty much doesn't belong in there. Oh shit, the microphone is messed up. Mic test, mic test, mic test. Mic test, mic test. There we go. Alright. I got my live on my phone, so it seems straight now. But um So all together, like Scissor does not belong in 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 the stop playing the lane category, right? Like, like Scissor does not belong there, but Scyther does. So I'm talking to stop them playing the lane. I, I mean, I wouldn't say like Tyranitar still works in lane. Like Jordan started, he still works in lane. Alright. So, so like can we move on to the next category? No, it really doesn't, in my opinion, it's a jungler. I don't know. Like, like, like I still being used in lane. I, I still see him being used in lane. Yeah, like he, he's one of those, like, mind you, I have another category that he probably fits better in. Um, so for the time being, like I said, we'll make changes later on. But uh, right now, I think that's the best place for him. So but we'll make changes later on if, if needs. So, yeah, 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 we can definitely come back to it. So next up, um, we have solid mid but late game. So this is the next category. Who do y'all feel like believe, uh, belongs in the solid mid to late game category? I said Garchomp and Greedent. So I'm gonna go with y'all at, at, at first. So Garchomp, Greedent. Tyranitar, Dragonite. Uh, where is Tyranitar? Dragonite. S somebody said Cinderace. I can kind of agree with that because he takes level 7. Decidueye. Where is Decidueye right here? Boom. Oh. Said Venusaur. You know what? They, they didn't split. Dark Fist or Water Fist. So I might have to make like another text for that. Like Dark Fist and Water Fist wasn't uh Um Glaceon that's early game. Like Glaceon is early game. Said Water Bear. Yeah, I might have to do another text for the for that one. I'm more than likely gonna have to make another text. Since y'all say water bear. Chandelure, yeah, we can definitely put Chandelure in there. Chandelure definitely is mid to late game. Chandelure is most definitely mid to late game. Both of Shifu, you're probably right. 
I'm just holding off because I think um let me just shrink that down to Urshi water. Water. Urshi. Okay. There we go. Age slash. Um what levels do Asia Slash learn his moves? Uh, what level does Asia Slash learn his moves? Level 5 and level 7, so it's the same as Cinderace. Well, Cinderace don't learn a move at level 5. Like, Cinderace learns his first move at, what, what level 7? Age Slash kind of gets it before then, but I still kind of agree that he's solid. I mean, but even his early game is still kind of good. It's not as good as some other ones, but, you know, I, I could definitely put him in there. No, that's what I said. Like, like, uh, like later on in the video, Valsky, um, like once we get all of them in place, then we're going to go back and make changes. Then we're going to go back and make changes later on. Mamoswine? I don't think Mamoswine is like... Well, Mamoswine is mid to late game, to be honest with you. He definitely is. We can throw him in there. Alright, now who else belongs there? He got good early game? Yeah, I mean, he got good early game. Like, his damage early game is good. But I think he shines mid to late game a lot. Say wiggly tough. I throw wiggly tough in there. Um, put the other Shifu in there. Y'all said. Cause that's the case, I can just take the text off of there. Okay. All right, so we can take the text off. Take off the text and just throw a Shifu in there. Because I use single strike, so that mid to late game is like desperate. Crush through low key should be why are you playing? Yeah, like low key, but yeah, but I'm gonna uh, save it for later. Like if we need to change them later, then I'll uh, I'll put them in there. Honestly, after realizing uh, HQ right now, both both of them are accurate. Pikachu solos. What are you smoking? Pikachu don't solo nothing. <laughs> His stun. Yeah, he good. Like he got a decent early game, but he peaks early. At that point, it's like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, but right now, we're for, but if y'all feel like we should change him later, then we'll change him later. But right now, he's there. And right now, we're like working on a solid mid to late game. Um, Scizor? He, um, he evolves at level 5, doesn't he? Scissor evolves at level 5, right? And he gets his second move at level 7, correct? Okay, so, so, so yeah, like... He's kind of solid. Like, I don't... I don't know if he fits that category. Because, mind you, like, we still got a few other categories that we can put Pokemon into. Yeah, for right now, I think he's good. Mr. Mime. That I can agree. Like, Mr. Mime. I don't know. Like, Mr. Mime probably fit in a... You know what? I'm going to put him in there for now. But I feel like Mr. Mime can go into another category. Yeah, I think Mr. Mime can go in another category. But I'm going to just sit him right there for right now. For, for at the moment. Uh, 
to be determined. That's for Pokemon who haven't been in the main game yet, but they've been in the test server. Mr. Mind Trump walls are good. <laughs> Why is Pika so low? Because he doesn't do enough damage as an attacker. And there's too many better too many better options. Like he doesn't do enough damage for the role that he's in. And then he peaks early game. Like his electric web is like the best thing he got. And then once he loses that, it's like it's it's you know. Like he just peaks too early in the game. Like, the best version of himself is the early game, low-key. Put Duralan on there. Put Duralan on there. Solid mid to late game, Duralan on. Um, I don't know. Who else has a solid mid to late game? Yeah, no, 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 uh, King, uh, like, once we're done placing a the Pokemon, then we're going to go back and make changes. Like, I already said that there's only two speedsters that kind of work in lane, and that's really Zoroark and, uh, and Leafeon. So I kind of, like, just put them there for the moment. But, but we're going to make some changes later on, so don't worry. Even if you know how to play him, like, he's just not, he just doesn't do enough damage. Triple Gamer, 99, appreciate it. Machamp? Mm -hmm. Now, Machamp is a late game Pokemon. I can tell you that. Machamp is a late game. You think they're going to add Duraludon Evolution? They might. If they do, they might add him as a separate license. But then again, we ain't seen him in the game that he was introduced in yet. So, Where would you rate Azumarill? Um, I don't know, but we'll see. Say Charizard? Charizard is definitely late game. Charizard is definitely mid to late game. What the fuck is Charizard right here? Charizard is definitely mid to late game. I agree. Hey, Ven Venusaur is solid, solid. I don't know, like, it, is like Venusaur considered like mid to late game? Cause, Cause, I don't really play Venusaur much, so I mean, in my experience, yeah, mid to late game. But I don't, I'm going off of y'all opinion. I'm, I'm going off of y'all opinion. Damn, Miguel, you late as hell. Venusaur is good. Yeah, Venusaur is mid to late. All right. Y'all say Venusaur is mid to late. Alright, true. His early game is also strong. When Blazer coming? Uh, we will get Blazer until September 14th. We're getting new too wide this Thursday. But that's why I got him in there to be determined because we haven't seen him in a in a uh, in a rank setting yet. Like we haven't seen him in the main game yet. They're only available in the test server at the moment. I think Gardevoir is late game, it, right? But then again, like, when Gardevoir reaches... Gardevoir learns her first move at level, what, 5 or 6? I ain't talking about when she evolves. Like, when did she learn her first move? At level 5? Okay. That's definitely mid to late game. Hey... If necessary, then we'll move her later on. But right now, I'm going to keep her right there. I'm going to keep her right there for the time being. Like I said, we will be making changes once all the Pokemon are placed. But right now, I think we'll... Um, right now, I think we'll... Uh, we'll just keep her right there for right now. What about Greninja? Greninja doesn't have a strong early game at all. Like, he definitely is kind of like...
I don't know, I might switch Greninja later on, but I'll put him in there. I, I, I will put him in there for the time being. I can agree with this because there's so many people that you miss Guardian's move. Lapras got like strong early game. I would not put Lapras in there. Like Lapras early game is real good. That whirlpool is is a good ass move. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> like Lapras is kind of good all game. <laughs> like Lapras is actually got a good all game. Like like there's never really a bad time for Lapras to be honest with you. And that's crazy to say. Like it's very few Pokemon that kind of fit a category like that. Like, Lapras is literally good no matter what time the game is. Early game solid, mid game solid, late game still good. Like, like you can't go wrong no matter what time. It looks like it got leaked. What got leaked? I don't think Gyarados got leaked yet. Like, we haven't seen no confirmation that Gyarados is coming to the game. The only other one besides the ones that was announced is, uh, is really Metagross. Like, we haven't got any confirmation that Gyarados is. But Metagross is the only one from the data mine that didn't get uh, released yet. Or in the, that they, they didn't make a trailer for it yet. Yeah. So I got a mid to late game right now. Princess Jolene, appreciate it. Alright, so who else do y'all think belongs in a uh, solid mid to late game? Is you mean guard chunk? Okay. I don't know. Would you say um? Would you say that Lucario belongs there? Or just hold off on Lucario for the time being. Blastoise, I agree. Blastoise definitely is one of those. Because unless you level him up, he is not going to be a threat. Because we're still making placements, Karma. Early game? What moves does Blastoise, does uh, the Squirtle have early game? Just Skull Bash and, uh, and Water Gun? I mean, like, Water Gun got, like, good pushback. Well, you know Pikachu ain't, ain't shit right now. That damn thing need a buff so bad, it's, it's ridiculous. Eater Gun and Skull Bash. He said Eater Gun. <laughs> Eater gun, they're really good secure damage. Alright, so. So, does everybody want me to take Blastoise out the solid mid to late game category? Okay. So, pretty much take, take Blastoise out the solid mid to late game category, right? Cause mind you, he still got other tiers that we can put him in, and we are going to make changes later on. So once all the Pokemon are placed, like we're and telling them can insta kill feeds. Uh, so anybody that's squishy, in comparison to other attackers, he is. Lucario better be top tier. Oh, hell no. Like, he's not top tier at all. That's the reason why they had to buff him, and he's still not up there. Zashian the best? I, I got, I got Zashian going into another category. So who else do y'all think belongs in the solid mid to late game category?
put Del Fox in there? Del Fox. And who else y'all think belongs in there? I don't know, because Lapras got a solid early game. I wouldn't say Lapras is mid to late game. I'm telling you. Yeah, like, Lap like it's kind of hard to argue that Lapras only is good at one point in the game. I haven't made him top yet. I haven't made him top yet, uh, Tiger. Like, we're kind of working our way from the bottom to the top. Just stay, just stay jungle. In comparison to other Pokemon who works better in in lane, some certain Pokemon just need to stay in the middle. You know, the only argument that I can make is Leafeon and Zorite. That's the only two where I can say could possibly go in lane and actually do good. Everybody else just needs to stay their ass in jungle. Hell, low key Sableye <laughs> needs to be in jungle. Loki Sableye doesn't need to be labeled as a support. That's he really a speedster, to be honest with you. But I'm gonna make changes later on. I'm gonna make changes later on. I do not think that Sableye belongs in fucking in, in a support role. Cramorant belongs mid solid mid to late game. Solid. And I mean, what moves the cra does Cramoran have early game? I don't know, what moves does Cramoran have early game? Let's go to Unite DB. Let me see. Where's Cramoran? Cinderace, go for Cramoran, boom. So it has... Abilities right here. Uh, Gold Missile. It has Whirlpool. Which is good AoE. It has good AoE. Early game. It doesn't. Feather Dance. So it has an AoE slow when it has a uh, AoE damage. I know that Surf and that Hurricane is is ridiculous. And he lands that at what level what six? At level four and level six. So he pretty much has a solid early game. He has a solid early game. Like he he learns his moves at the same pace as um as the evolutions. As the Eevees. I didn't put Goo Dreamer yet. Yeah, Cramoran is kind of good early game. I wouldn't put him in mid to late game at all. I mean, like, since he learns that uh, that Hurricane at level 4, that's pretty much like... Like, that's a knockup. Like, you, you can secure some kills with that. So I wouldn't put him in that category. I wouldn't put him in that category. He's, he's not mid to late game. Alright, so who else y'all think belongs in the uh, in the solid mid to late game category? Right, because at level four, some Pokemon ain't even got the other move yet. Most Pokemon don't have their other move yet. I say Blissey mid to late game. I can kind of agree with that, because unless you got them eggs, like you're not really you're not really healing nothing unless you got soft boiled and egg bomb. Alright, so who else y'all got mid to late game? As we think of Dragonite. Um, I'm gonna get to Dragonite later. Just to get to that level 4, level 6, so you don't really need Egg Bomb. No, the reason why I said Egg Bomb because it kind of ties together with Soft Boil. 
and you get more uh, eggs. Like you get access to more eggs if you pick that move. Like I think your egg usage goes from like what five to like four to five. And I think when it upgrades, I think you get like six. I could be wrong about the six. But I know you get like at least one more egg if you pick egg bomb with soft boil. I honestly feel like Intellion belongs in, the, in, in another category. Besides, uh, it's like two to four? Okay. Yeah, but the reason why I said Egg Bomb and, and Soft Boil, they work well together because you get more egg stocks. Like, you get more egg stocks, so. But still, mid to late game, you kind of get them, like, right? Or does she learn them, learn them early? Egg bomb at level six, soft boy at level four. Okay. Not too bad. to late game yeah like she probably doesn't cap until she really gets to like level 9 like even though she probably has access to her moves early she probably doesn't really cap until like later levels I'm talking about like their max stats that's what I'm talking about like normally you know how some Pokemon they don't get like their maximum critical until level 9 I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it in that sense like certain Pokemon like their stats don't really peak until they hit level 9 so I was thinking about it in that regard We got still got other categories. So Hooper might fit in another category though. Like we still got like what? Four more categories? Four or five more categories? Yeah, like Hooper is the meta right now. But Hooper is like, you know, Hooper takes experience. Hoop is not bad. Hooper just takes experience. Next tier. All right, like we move on to the next tier, or do y'all think we can? Uh, or, or does anybody else belong in the solid mid to late game? That's good. Snorlax. I don't know, we'll see. Alright, so let's move on to the... I feel like some more Pokemon are fit there. But like I said, like we'll go over them as, as we need to. So next up we have... Let me see. We have Solid but needs Experience. That's the next tier. Solid but needs Experience. Let me move this down. I mean, they're good, but they're only good in the right hands. That's that's what this category is for. They're good, but they're only good in the right hands. Like, you have to know what you're doing with them in order to really be good with them. Hooper, definitely probably the number one draft pick for that. I'm going to throw Hooper in there. Snorlax. Yeah, like... Mew 100%. Mew, I can agree with that. 
He definitely goes in there. Mew could be solid mid to late game, though. But you still need to know what you're doing with Mew because you got to know what moves to know when. So I, I, I definitely would agree that it belongs there. Crustle? Or Lucario? Yeah. Is that Lucario? Because there's a lot of people that don't know how to use Lucario that good at all. Yeah, but you have to like know what moves to use. Like certain people don't know to switch certain moves at, at a certain time, so that kind of, that kind of takes experience. There's really no experience with Parasite, and for those who don't understand when I say Parasite, we're talking about Comfy. It's kind of like an inside joke on my TikTok live streams that I call Comfy Parasite because basically that's what it is. So, anytime I say Parasite, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know, like, would y'all really put, I mean, is Parasite really that difficult to use? Like, you're just attaching Buzzwall, I can think Buzzwall, I see Buzzwall is solid but needs experience. Because really, 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 like, Kung is really just like a one-dimensional Pokemon. Like right now we're doing solid but needs experience. We're not doing early games just yet. We're not doing early games just yet. We're doing solid but needs experience. Yeah, Zerby, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Like you got people that's picking Buzzwell and they're still using Lunge. So, <laughs> and then you got to worry about the muscle gauge so people don't know when to use his moves. So, yeah, like he needs a little bit of experience to really use. Yeah, I wouldn't put Zashian, Zashian in. Zashian can kind of go in one or two categories. Sableye got nerfed. And he's just... He's in a supporter role, and I feel like he, and when he, 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 he'll probably work better as a speedster. He's like the weakest supporter right now, so it, it literally makes no sense to use him over other supporters. I'll go back and make changes later. Right now, Gengar is in, uh, stop playing in lane. I'll go back and make changes once we put more in there. Oh no, you can still main him. I'm just saying in in comparison to the other supporter roles, he's the weakest one. Italian, definitely, I would say Italian. You gotta know when to go in with him. You gotta know when to hit his critical stocks. You gotta know when to attack. That definitely takes experience. That takes experience. Because a lot of people don't know you're supposed to attack with him with his critical stocks. You're not supposed to go in before that. Right. I mean, I've been saying Snipe Shot was the better move set. I said that like July 3rd. I, I've been saying that was the better move set. It's just that people want it easy. So liquidation is just a sure shot. You know, it's sure hit. People don't know that you're only supposed to use Snipe Shot when you have critical stocks. To, to max out your damage. That takes experience. People don't have that. Elder Goss. Oh, no, you see Elder Goss belongs and needs experience? I think it's depending on if the enemy, if, if you, if you're the enemy competition. Hmm. I don't know, like y'all think, uh, let's see, who's, hold on, let me move this over. So we got Dragapult, Clefable, Scizor, 
Umbreon, Lapras, Gudra, Zashian. Crystal Clefable. I feel as you can go there because you really have to know when to single someone out. Yeah, it's also a real early game too. But I think, but do you think that the experience with him is more important than uh, when when he's best? Because you still gotta know, right? You still gotta know. How to single somebody out? Sylveon? That overall experience this might be it. Okay, we'll throw him in there. Somebody said Sylveon. Yeah, throw him in there. To be determined, meaning that they're in the test server, but we haven't seen them in the in a ranked game yet. They haven't been in the main game yet, so we don't know how well they'll play in the actual match. I'm doing. Well, Umbreon's not early game. Like, I, I would say Umbreon is what, mid to late game? No, I think Zashian belongs in another category. I think Zashian belongs in another category. A DPS for Fable. Shifu, single striker Shifu. Decidueye. Let me see something. What level does Decidueye learn his moves? I think Decidueye is like mid to late game, right? Razor Lee, Spare Shackle. Yeah, the Decidueye might be mid to late game. Because it learns his moves late, late. I probably move Decidueye mid to late game because it doesn't really get Spirit Shackle until like level 7. And that's like kind of later in the game. Huge late game, so I'll, I'll go ahead and correct that. Or Decidueye. Oh no, it's already there. It's already there. Guja might be an experience because of the Dragon Pulse. No, I definitely say Guja is uh, up there. I don't know, would y'all say Elder Goss is, is uh, mid to late game or needs experience? Like, would you say Elder Goss is mid to late game? Mid to late? Right. Right, so what about Scizor? What about Scizor? Scizor needs experience. I mean, I think Scizor would be experience. Honestly, it could be experience. I think the tree could be experience. At the moment, I think the tree is just kind of linear right now. Just get wood hammer and um and horn. Wood hammer and horn, like it's kind of like. So, so, what level does uh, Trevenant Tre learn its moves? Because it might be mid to late game. Oh, it's kind of early game. 
Pretty sure you have a follow. Okay, it gets horn leech at level seven. It's horn leech at level seven. But it learns wood hammer at level five. Scissor always good mid to late game. Okay. So we'll put Trevin in what solid beneath experience or mid to late game? Like where would y'all put him? Put Trevin in solid mid to late game or solid but needs experience. Tree needs experience, all right. I know, like, it kind of learns its best move at, like, level five. Its best move is wood hammer, so it learns it kind of early. But we're going to make changes later. We're going to make changes later. Like, this is just where we're putting them for the time being. We're going to make changes once, like, later on. Scizor is mid to late game, while Trevenant is definitely experienced. Take Dragapult's experience. I'm going to throw Dragapult up there. I see Scizor is mid to late too, right? Text. That's about it right now. All right, would y'all say that, okay. Is Umbreon mid to late game or is Umbreon like, y'all say Umbreon mid to late game? some changes lever uh Zion it's just like that's the current placement for it right now need to late Umbreon because it's up there because because mean look can help out a lot early game mean look with, with the right teammate can give you a lot of early game but so we'll just place it there for right now By itself, though, look, 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 like early game is like Pokemon that can like solo lanes by itself early on in the game. Like Umbreon don't really have that type of strength early on. I think moves like Mean Look is the best move, but it's not always the best option. For example, like, like if you're going against a Dodrio or any Pokemon that can escape quick, do you think? Foul play would be the better move to use against them, or like mean look to lock them down. Yeah, yeah, like it's certain move, like it's certain Pokemon. Like if you're going against a Dodrio or a Talonflame, or even a Gengar, 
Like that mean look can stop them from running away. Hell, even Sableye. So, but mean look by itself isn't gonna like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Umbreon is probably mid to late. And foul play is the damage on foul play is based on the Pokemon that it hits first. Shout out to Gamer Boy, appreciate the follow. Gonzalez 1200, appreciate the follow. My bad, Aaron. No, I mean, like, I'm. Uh, there's no problem, Cozy. There's no problem, Cozy. So we still got Solid Beneath's experience. I don't know, like, do you think Crustle needs to be there? I think Crustle is one dimensional, but it's like you still gotta know how to play him. And, and, and it does have a solid early game. So, it's, I mean, so you think Crustle is experience or Crustle is um, solid mid to late game? I mean, Crustle is really one dimensional, but. I've seen some stupid crystals. Honestly, mean look is such a disgusting move. I mean, it will literally cancel up this is oh. It will. It, it actually cancels out uh, a lot of people. <laughs> what about Kramer, right? Um, so, crystal is experience. I'll put crystal as experience or mean to late game. Experience? Alright, do everybody agree that Crystal is experience? I would say Crystal is experience. I've seen some dumb people use uh put that rock wall up and stop the <laughs> and stop their team from getting the kill. So I, I would definitely say experience. I, I've seen some stupid crystals. I've seen some stupid crystals. I've seen some crystals that put that wall up. The rock <laughs> I've, I've, I've witnessed that firsthand, so that's crystal is definitely experience. Low key, we can kind of move Zorak to experience too. I think Zorak is experience as well. Cause you know, a lot of people don't know how to do that. Don't know how to do a shadow claw. It's to be determined. Yeah, Zoroark would be experience. Huh? Yeah, I think we can move Zoroark up. Cause a lot of people don't know how to do that shadow claw. That actually takes experience. So we can move that up. If Zorak does the right stuff, it can tank moves by healing fast enough. So who else we got in there? Greed it. Did they say put greed it there? Solid beneath experience. Kremlin is experienced too. I don't know. It's really kind of a toss up with Kremlin. I would say Solid Beneath's experience, but it, it, it got a decent early game. His early game ain't crazy, but he's still, you know, like he's still solid. I gotta remind myself that I, just because I know how to use him don't mean that, uh, other people do. So you say Cramorant goes in solid beneath experience?
So does everybody think Creme Red belongs in solid but needs experience? So we're going to move Cramorant up to Solid, but needs experience. So they got Slowbro, Clefable, Parasite, or Comfy, Lapras, Glaceon, Espeon, Snorlax, and Aloha Ninetales in A9. Blastoise is uh is solid mid to late game. I think Parasite is the last thing that could go there. And solid but needs experience. But Parasite and solid but needs to, needs experience. You gotta know when to detach to get the flowers back and you gotta know how to detach and go to another that takes some experience so I, I would agree right but the point that the experience that Cramorant needs is knowing when to get off your ally so that you can regain your flowers back faster and get back on them and knowing when to get off of one ally and go to the next. So I would say that takes some experience. So I would leave, I, I would keep a parasite. Parasite there. So so you think that's it, that that's enough or do we need to put like some more there? Like the Pokemon we got left is uh Aloha, Ninetales, Slowbro, Snorlax, Espeon, Glaceon, Clefable, Zacian, Lapras, and Mewtwo X. So are these good enough right here or do you think we need to put some more in there? Anybody else need the solid but needs ex solid but needs experience? Slow bro. I got Bill Fox in me. It's a late game. I don't know, I would say, uh, it's just making a tier list. It's just having some fun, AJ. Making a tier list on who we think, um, what Pokemon belongs in what category. The categories that I made. So, like, should we put Slowbro in Solid but needs experience? If I would say his Unite move could take, you know, take some effort to, to knowing when to use it. He's in Solid mid to late game. Oh, no, no, he's, uh, he's Solid but needs experience, Cashmere. Which is the current tier that we're working on right now. So would you say Slowbro is solid but needs experience? Yeah, but, but, but wouldn't that take experience, Spooter? 
Like, slow rolls oats it, in order to use it effectively, you don't want to just use it all willy nilly. Like, you want to make sure, because you can actually stop other Unite moves with it. And that kind of, and that probably takes a little bit of dexterity to know when to use it. Like, you can actually stop other Pokemon's Unite moves with it. Yeah, but does the average person don't know that? Like, I've seen people use his Unite move on, like, targets that didn't even make no sense. Like, I've seen some stupid slow bros. Would you say slow rolls mid to late game or solid but needs experience? So slow rolls like more so mid to late game than solid but needs experience. Mid to late. So we'll put them in mid to late. So the only ones we got left is Mewtwo X, Lapras, Zashian, Clefable, Glaceon, Espeon, Snorlax, and A9. Super easy, super early. Uh, Snorlax. It's not actually that difficult though. You just need Heavy Slam and, and Block. Like, they don't really take a lot of experience to use. All you're really doing is butt splashing people and, like, pushing them out the way. Can it really be? Are you doing just standing there and just pushing people out of the way? Like, is it really that hard to use? Wario time. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people use it and miss the entire damn team. <laughs> they miss the, they miss the entire team. <laughs> Oh shit. That's funny. So a lot of people use it and still miss the entire team. That's hilarious. Alright, so. Would you say that you think it'd be easy in 1600 if so many people do nothing with blood? Or... I don't know. Like, would you say Espeon needs experience? Because Espeon doesn't really have a real easy move set like that. I mean, even with like the sure hit moves and with Future Sight and um. With side shock, that's where I feel pretty easy. I don't know. I haven't seen too many like I don't know. But maybe it's just not my experience of going against Espeon. I haven't seen too many Espeons that were good early game like that. But maybe y'all, maybe the overall experience may be different. Maybe just my experience differs. Stored power, that was the other move, stored power. I don't know, maybe it's because I use like defenders and all rounders most of the time. Uh, like, Espeon doesn't really scare me like that, so I, I never really thought it to be like a 
an early game monster. But then again, I also run assault vests, and I have a lot of health, so I don't really, I don't really see it being that big of a threat. But the overall experience might be better. Maybe I just know how to counter it. So we just say it's solid. Okay. All right, so what about uh, so for Snorlax? Would we say Snorlax would be solid mid to late game, or solid but needs experience? Like, like where would y'all put Snorlax? I think experience it fits better. Experience, experience, okay. Everybody say Snorlax goes to experience. So we'll go there. And what about Aloha and Nine Tails? Like Nine Tails and Clefairy and Espeon and what you call them? Aloha and Nine Tails is experience or mid to late game? Early game? Okay, so we can wait. What about Clefable? Buzzwell is solid but needs experience. So would y'all say that, that Clefable is solid mid to late game or solid but needs experience? Clefable is situational. Experience with the fable. Good secure early move set. So pretty much we can move to the next tier then. Yeah, yeah, we can pretty much move to the next tier then, right? Because we only got two tiers left. And I literally might have to get rid of one of them. I might have to get rid of one of the tiers. So the last tiers that we have, right, is crazy early game, overpowered, and gap. That's the last three. We're going to move Scyther down here. So crazy early game. Hold on, wait a minute. Like we still got to do one at a time. Like right now, like we're working on crazy early game. Who has a crazy early game? I think Zashian belongs there. Zapper. Crazy early game because he peaks early. Um, out of these, like, who else you think got a solid early game? Blue or Shifu? A9? Aloha Nine Tails? I know Glaceon got a good early game. Them shards hurt. I'm sure it's hurt. Brush, I think, is good right there. Honestly, everything else besides Mewtwo, Zashian is OP. Zashian just peaks early. Since Zashian ain't really up. Mid to late game, Zashian kind of like. I got the Zashian reach level 5. Like, Sacred Sword is all it really needs. Play rough and agility don't really like. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 
Man, that whirlpool that Zap, that Lapras got is really good. So you think Lapras is a uh, crazy early game or overpowered? Because then the next two. Would you say Lapras is crazy early game or overpowered? Appreciate the follow, air cool. Lapras is okay early game. Clefable experience. Got to know if you have to go support or damage with pretty much everyone. I say he's crazy early, but not overpowered. Okay. So Lapras can go to... You say that Cofable can be experienced, so we'll drop that there. Espeon isn't overpowered. I, th I think he has a crazy early game. I don't think Cofable is overpowered. He has a crazy early game, though. I said we was going to move some of them later on. I said we was going to move some of them later on, uh, 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 Spooter. We was going to move some of them later on. So, so I can definitely see... This thing early game is fucking retarded. That Solar Blade... His Leaf Blade still hurts. I don't give a fuck what, what nerf they did to that thing. That Leaf Blade and that Solar Blade still hurt. So would you say Espeon got a good early game, or would you say needs experience? Early game secure and nutty. Okay. So we'll put this early game. So the only one we really got left is Gap. And that's me 2 x it was going right up there at the top. So should we get rid of the overpower of them? The overpower tier? If that's the case, I don't know, like should we get rid of the overpower tier? Mind you, Scyther is, um, it stopped playing in lane. I don't know, like should we get rid of the overpower tier just to like, 